Hi guys, good morning. Today is Monday, the second week of the workshop build. This week we are going to work in making the forms. If we are lucky, everything goes smooth and we do a good job. The first thing that we are gonna do right now is just to present there uh, the first wooden piece and to make sure that it's horizontal because if not then we will continue excavating a little bit under underneath it to make sure everything is level that's the first one and then we're gonna go uh, with the second one that is gonna be perpendicular to that and um, unlock that angle so we can start moving around taking dimensions because we will need to connect another one just a piece of it on the on this side because the, the wooden piece is 250 so we need to put 70 centimeters more Ya vale. será cuestión de yo ponerme aquí encima vale. y que tengamos suerte en gancho. Venga.
Now we're gonna cut uh, this form to the exact length, so it's gonna be five meters exactly. And the other two sides, we're gonna leave it longer. That way, both long sides, they are perfect size. And now we don't have to be doing numbers and things like that. So it's just five meters and there is no way to, to do it wrong. So it, this second board wasn't actually 250 and uh, we need 5 meters so when we put uh, both together then it was 498 which is 2 centimeters shorter than what we need. So we had to remove it all. We're gonna use another one that we have it is actually 250. I don't know why they don't bring these things like they're supposed to be but um, it's gonna, it's gonna change it. And we'll use that one for, for the other side which um, we need. Uh, do, uh, these two centimeters are not as important because it's going to be longer. But yeah, we're going to need to remove it. Puedes ponerle algo por ahí para levantar la madera. Sí. We received a lot of comments and questions regarding the new structure and about Blocken after the last week's episode. Blocken is a light steel profiles manufacturer and they offer us three different options. First and the most basic one is the one that you buy stock length profiles that you cut to size yourself. Second option is to send them your design. They computerize it and make the profiles for it with the exact length and already pre-drilled so it becomes like a Lego kind of thing that you need to put together. And the third option and the most prefab one is where they send you walls and roof panels already assembled so you just need to stand them up and connect them together. We already built a cabin using a stock size profiles, cutting them all to size and it was a very fun process. But we love a challenge and this time we were open for a new way of building and have finally decided to test the second option where the steel profiles come already cut to size and pre-drilled. I already sent them all the plans and 3D of our design. They will now fabricate the profiles and ship it to us. We are taking the workshop as a final test before starting our biggest project, which is going to be our final home around 180 square meters. We will be able to test in real life a more prefab option so we can make the best decision for the bigger project.
Nice. So we just positioned this line at 135 centimeters from, from this wall. What we did was to measure 135, um, 135, and we drove this inside the ground on each corner and secure it so that right now this thing doesn't move. Well, it moves a little bit here because we need to add more to, to secure everything. And right now the, the whole form is twisted. I actually saw it in the, in the drone footage. So what we need to do is to measure both diagonal and make sure that it's an actual rectangle. And once we do that, we will secure each corner independently. Twenty-six point two, five hundred and six point two, and then we're gonna go 
on the other side. Five hundred ninety six. Five hundred ninety six point six. So we need to push it that way. Yeah, I'm on a delay. And uh, we will be missing one for this center, no? I will have to leave No, no, que hizo que levante de allí. So, que tenía que hacer? Sube, baja. Baja. We just secure all four corners and they cannot move anymore. And now what we need to do is to actually make sure that this line is a perfect line. As you can see right now this can, can move a little bit. So when, the, when we pour the concrete, uh, the concrete weights a lot and it's going to push this out. And, and we don't want that. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to secure two screws or two nails. I don't know if we're going to use screws or nails on each side and run a string super taut. So that way we can see a perfect line and then we're gonna put a couple a couple more of these sticks uh, drive it in the ground to secure it where the string is saying So we just put the line, and as you can see, um, the line is inside, so that means that this line, that the, that the wood is sticking in, sticking in the slab, so we will need to push it like that, a little bit, to make it um, align with the, with the rope, which I think we need to tense more now.
for today. We're gonna leave it just like that. Everything is secure. Maybe tomorrow we put a couple more of stakes in some places to, to just to make sure that it doesn't move when we pour the concrete. Everything is looking good. We had some moments trying to square this out that uh, we thought it was going to be very complicated to do, and um, but we were able to to do it. It, it is not 100% right. These first three lines are just perfect, perfectly level and nice, and then. That one, for some reason, the one in the back, makes no sense. I guess the wood is just doing like this, you know? So, nothing that we can do to, to fix that, and uh, we just are gonna go with the flow, and it's going to be uh, the first time we pour concrete. Well, we did the little pads for the cabin, which is something you just pour the concrete and mix it and call it a day. This is a different level of what we have done so far. So we had to buy some new tools uh, in order to make everything flat. We're gonna be pouring two huge concrete slabs on the other side. So it was just a time to get them. And um, once we receive that, we will be ready to, to pour. I mean, we still need to put the plastic and put the rebars and the hold downs. And once we do that, then we will be ready to pour. What's up guys? Today's episode is sponsored by Skillshare. As you guys know, Skillshare has been a sponsor of our channel since pretty much the early beginnings. Not only they help us build the cabin and now are helping us to build this workshop, but they also helped us improve the quality of our videos. I do believe that repetition makes perfection. We have edited more than 55 videos at this time and we have been members of Skillshare before even starting this channel. So it's kind of really amazing to be working with them. We have taken more than 60 classes with them. All of them focus on, on shooting and editing and, and storytelling. They have definitely taken our videos to the next level. The last class I took was the one for Marques Brownlee. It's called YouTube Success, Script, Shoot and Edit with MKBHT which really shows his editing and shooting process, along with great tips from one of the best YouTubers out there. I mean, he has more than 15 million subscribers, so he really knows what he's doing. And I'm saying all this because today you can also join Skillshare for free. The first 1,000 of you to click in the link in the description box will get one month free trial of Skillshare, so you can start exploring your creativity today. morning guys we just woke up and um, I will go to the city nearby to buy rivers and a plastic sheet that I would like to put underneath the, the slab so we don't get the humidity of the ground going up the slab last night I received the plan from Blocken with anchor bolt locations which is super helpful because that way I can place the anchor bolts exactly where where they're supposed to be and they will be waiting uh, with pre-cut holes in in the wall panels and we're very excited for the for the concrete slab you to be honest it's something that i really wanted to do for for years and uh, i only seen done by others and it's good to have the chance to put my hands on it walking aspen breakfast and headed to the city I just got back. The van is looking good. It wasn't that bad. I thought it was going to be way scarier, but uh, it came, came perfectly. 
secure on top of the roof rack. And now we're gonna offload it and um, probably just lay it on the side of the form uh, because I also got the plastic, which is pretty good news. So we're gonna put the plastic first and then do the rebars. Aspen, you cannot escape, man. I'm sorry. Absolutely. You need to help. Um, Venga, corre. <laughs> Vamos. Muy bien, muy bien. Muy bien. The hammer dog. <laughs> Thank you for helping. <laughs> and at the same time, Lolita is working really hard. Pepe just went to check where is the exact location for the pipes for the water because we want to make sure that we have the pipes coming in and out exactly where the sink is going to be. I want to make sure that uh, all the pipes are exactly in the proper place before we pour the concrete. So we have four pipes. One is electrical conduit, two drain pipes, one for the washing machine okay. and the second one for the sink. And also we have two smaller multi-layer pipes, just the regular white pipes that we normally use. One for cold water and the other one is going to be hot water. And now I'm going to take a picture of the dimensions. That way I can have it in my phone while I do this and I don't forget anything. How's it going? We just mark where the main drain has to go and it has to go 45 degrees from the main drain of the house using a 45 piece. It's good practice to use 45. And of course, 
you can follow the line exactly where we put a stake <laughs> so we now have to remove that stake maybe put it elsewhere like here While Eugenia is finishing that trench, I'm gonna go ahead and trim the stakes that are sticking out, like this guy. And the reason is because when you scrape the concrete, I mean, I'm not expert. This is gonna be the first time that we do this, but I've done a lot of YouTube research. And when you scrape, you're gonna use this top part, then we're gonna be hitting this piece all the time. We don't want that, so I'm gonna just trim it. Aspen is supervising the rebars. Are they okay, man, or are they too rusty already? I think they are rusty, but uh, that's what we got, man. Entonces, la boca de este tubo para que después me pase los cables de ahí, si no es realista, pues tiene que estar como por aquí, ¿no? has to be at 4 and it's at 9 we need to put this cable over here so we need to cut it like here I have to cut 10 centimeters I spoke with Blocken last night because they wanted to give us a hole in the bottom track for us to pass the electrical conduit. Uh, so we already set a place for it. It's gonna be 40 centimeters from the edge of the slab. So I'm gonna mark it here. That way we know that here uh, we will need to leave a conduit. The actual wall section will come with a slot in it for us to, to pass the, the conduit. We are planning to put this four centimeters away from the edge. This is gonna be sticking through the, the main channel so this is going to be a wall and the cables are going to be inside the wall probably at the end we will cut it almost like over here at the end um, but for now for the concrete we're going to just leave it over here so we see it pretty clearly uh, I'm going to just mark here cut I think we're going to secure it already no? Really? yes okay let's do it I don't know how to hold it here, to be honest. Do you? Okay. Why do they make this so complicated? I don't get it. That's a little complicated. No! I can't! We need to get some muscle. <laughs> In Spain, this, this thing, this <laughs> thing doesn't come. And then you put these guys and you like glue them. But here in Portugal, they give you this kind of like rubber washer. 
put it there and then it doesn't go through. No me complete. And then if you buy these fittings, they all come with, with these kind of things. You cannot have, I don't know, two females elbow. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's complicated. I can't! No puedo, Guillo. ¿Lo hago yo? <risa> Igual puedo. <risa> oh, que va, Guillo, no entra, tío. I'm gonna make brutal force than in my gloves. What are we missing? We're missing a lot of stuff. We're missing a Y connection here. Then we're missing another Y connection. We only have one. How many Y connections? I don't know. We need two in 40 millimeters no we don't miss any uh, this one is the only one that we need in 40 millimeters now then we need a 30 a 32 millimeters one and then a 45 degrees in in 40 millimeters right down huh? i'm trying to Time to wake up from the mini nap. Take a second coffee and continue digging the trench. Much better now. I just got back with my co-driver here. I was able to get all the pieces that we need that we were missing. I was expecting a big order that we made uh, to arrive today. I, and I crossed the delivery guy on the road and we say hi to each other and then he said, hey, wait, wait, wait. So we stopped in the middle of the road and he gave me the packages. And that's why Aspen is here because there are so many packages that uh, he couldn't fit with, I mean, he could fit, but um, he wasn't very comfortable, so I upgraded his passage to business class. I might show you the packages today or tomorrow. There are actually tools for the concrete, I think I mentioned before. Hammer. Pliers for the wire, for the rebars. Many more tools for the concrete. We got for the edges, so we make an, like a curved edge for the concrete slabs. But I will show you guys later once we start, also I got this, this hammer, which is again like a heavy duty hammer. I'm gonna actually take it up. But yeah, we'll show you guys later once we start with the concrete. I hope Eugenia did the trench. <laughs> I think she did. She did dig the trench for the water pipes. What a great job she did. So we are ready to rumble, man. New day here in the cabin. Evgenia just prepared a power breakfast. Sweet potatoes made in the fireplace.
new measuring tape. We were looking for one that actually had a magnet. I don't know if we can show it to you, but uh, actually had a magnet. So when we so when we do um, the light steel framing, then I can measure or you can measure with, without the need of someone else on the other side because it will it will just attach to it. Oh, finally! What's that for?